Hello, everybody. My name is Koa Johnson. I am the multi-literacy student outreach lead here at the WMC, uh, which basically means that I am in charge of the sort of student outreach as well as sort of doing some of these, helping out with these workshops, including the more tech-oriented ones. I am also a graduate tutor. Um, so that's kind of a little bit who I am. I graduated about two or three years ago uh, with a sort of major in English with an emphasis on creative writing as well as a minor in psychology. So that's just my brief little introduction there. Um, but the main purpose that we're all here for, obviously, is to go over Audacity. So Audacity is a audio Audio editing program that is completely free. It's a software that is very sort of commonly used by a lot of folks who work in audio. There are other audio editing softwares out there on the market, um, but this is one that is completely free, pretty easy to use, and is pretty powerful. So that's why we're teaching it here. Um, you'll notice I have this tiny URL, URL right here. If you want to click on that tiny URL or if you want to go to that link, again, that's tinyurl.com slash WMC dash audacity. It'll bring you to this sort of Google Slides deck where you can, you know, go ahead and sort of follow along on your own. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to our workshop today, we have four different parts here. We're going to talk a little bit about resources, the different resources that exist for the Audacity. We're going to talk about installation, how to actually install sort of Audacity and sort of make sure you have it on your computer. The biggest part of this sort of workshop is we're going to talk about the tools within Audacity. So we're going to talk about everything that you can do within it, um, all the different things that you can do that you'll probably be needing for podcasting or any of those other sort of audio editing sort of assignments you may have. And then lastly, that last section is for practice. Although this is asynchronous and I understand that I won't be there to basically sort of give you sort of some of the guidance that you may need during those individual practice sections. Sessions, I would highly advise that you go ahead and take five, 10 minutes to try and go through that practice just because it can be helpful to kind of just go through all the different elements that we talked about in this sort of presentation. Um, so that way you're fully aware and that way you're sort of already have an understanding of the different tool set and you can play around with it a little bit. So firstly, let's talk about resources. So uh, when it comes to Audacity um, and using Audacity, we at the WMC are here to help and you can always ask me, uh, Koa, a question or any other WMC sort of tutor who's training Audacity questions about Audacity. Um, but just wanna make sure that you're aware that we're not the only resource that can help you. Not only is there this sort of wonderful website, but there's also YouTube. You can search up YouTube and just be like, oh, how, do this, how does the compressor work in Audacity? And chances are you're gonna find either a five viewed video or a hundred thousand and viewed a video that's going to have those individual details on how to do those things in Audacity. So because again, this is a free resource and has been around for a while, a lot of people have a lot of different tutorials on how to use it. And you can see their support website actually has quite a bit here. You can see they talk about sort of getting started um, and talk about sort of editing audio, all this other stuff. So any of these sort of questions that they say, like common troubleshooting steps about like rescanning audio devices, blah, blah, blah. They have a bunch of different details here. So when in doubt, um, you're always more than welcome to sort of go to this sort of support page. Um, again, we have the WMC are here to help, but just so you're aware that there are other resources out there as well. So when it comes to installing Audacity to make sure you actually have it on your computer so you can actually, you know, get started in sort of editing your audio, um, all you'll go, you'll all you'll do is you'll go to audacityteam.org slash download, um, or if you just search up Audacity, uh, it'll be the first thing that shows up on Google. And then from here, it actually just has the download right here. But if you just go to downloads, um, it'll be to this page, which is the one that I linked here. Um, and again, this download page, all you'll do is you'll just click on whatever sort of system you have. So if you have a Mac, you'll click Mac OS. If you have a Linux, you'll click Linux. If you have a Windows, you'll click Windows. And from there, it'll give you sort of these different sort of um, installation files. Chances are you're going to be the first one. So for Windows, you'll just do the 64-bit installer. You'll click this button. It'll go ahead and install that to your computer. You'll run that. And then when you run that, it'll actually install Audacity. So same thing for Mac. You'll just click on this. It'll download a file. You'll install that file, so on and so forth. You'll run that file, and then it'll be installed. So that's how you're going to go ahead and go through installation. Again, if there's any questions, they actually have that specific uh, sort of page specifically on how to download Audacity. Um, so if there's any question that you have, you're more than welcome to go through here or again, make an appointment at the WMC. So with that in mind, let's get started. So let's actually take a look at Audacity and what Audacity has to offer. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that everything is set up for us to include our audio in there, as well as to understand some few basic terms that I'm used throughout this. So um, I'll go over this little sort of um, these sort of little buttons later. But first, I want to talk about the audio settings, because this is very important when we're actually getting our audio set up. Um, so these audio settings are basically where you're going to set your playback device, which is your recording, or sorry, your playback device, which is where the audio will be playing, and your recording device, which will be your microphone. So if especially if you want to do some recording in Audacity and then edit it immediately afterwards, you want to make sure the recording device is set to the microphone you want to use. Otherwise, you might have lower quality audio. 
Um, same, similarly, for the playback device, if you're in the library and you want to listen to audio um, or you want to listen to your audio and you're editing it and it plays to your laptop, that can be embarrassing, uh, but also you just want to make sure that you can hear it correctly. So what you'll do is you'll go to audio setup and then you'll hover over playback device and recording device and make sure that those are set to the correct values. Secondly, something else that I'll be talking a little bit about is the timeline. Um, that's just going to be all of this. And the timeline is basically where you're going to drop your audio files and where you can see your audio waves. Um, and then lastly, there's these little audio settings here, which basically tell you how loud you are being, um, as well as what is the maximum threshold. Um, you will probably set some or um, start somewhere around here. So if you are getting cut off on your microphone, you can always drag it a little bit more um, to the right so that way you don't get cut off. Or if you want to get a cut off or you want to make sure you're not going above a certain volume, you can always adjust it to the left. Same thing over here. This one will automatically update based on the audio that is playing to tell you how loud it is. So now that I've shown you that on sort of slides, let me show you how it looks like on Audacity. So you can see right here, um, it's actually blank. That's because we don't have any audio in here, but we'll get that we'll get that here in just a second. Um, but firstly, let's make sure my audio setup is correctly. So again, you'll click on this button here, audio setup. And my playback device, you see I have a bunch of them here, but we have the correct one set here. And the recording device, we also have the correct one set here. So those are correct. And right now you can see it's actually not sort of adjusting my recording level. And right now my playback video level are all sort of static here and they're all set to the various sort of right here. Um, and that's okay. We don't want to touch it. So that's looking good. Uh, but let's talk about actually getting some audio in here so we can actually sort of listen to some things. So in order to see stuff on our timeline, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go to file, import, audio, and then you'll, we'll select our audio. So again, that'll be file import and audio. Uh, you can also click and drag onto the timeline itself and that'll work too, um, but either of those work. So let me show you how that works in Audacity. So again, I'll go to file, I'll go to import, I'll go to audio, and then from there you can see I already have some practice files set out, so I'm gonna do this test audio. So you can see here, we got a nice little sort of file here. We have a uh, sort of a bunch of sort of talking points. So why don't we just go ahead and give this a listen to see what we're talking about here. The Writing and Multi-Literacy Center, or WMC, is a free organization and service here on campus that will help you out with all of your writing and communication needs. You can set up appointments on... Oh, I forgot. Um, let's go ahead and restart that line. You can set up free appointments with a tutor like myself for 30 minutes or an hour, in person, via Zoom, or even asynchronously via voice thread. We're here to help you at any stage of your assignment, whether you're just getting started, need help with citations, or you just want a second pair of eyes before you submit. We're open seven days a week, and I hope to see you soon. Okie dokie. So you can see we have a lot of sort of different audio here. Um, and you see it's okay, but there's a few things that we probably want to change about it. Um, there's a lot of awkward silence in the very beginning, which is kind of weird, especially since we're talking about this little advertisement. Um, we are a little sort of like, you know, mention here. Uh, we actually cut out, or not cut out, but we we have a bit of audio that we kind of mess up our lines on, so we want to make sure that's different. And especially near the end here, it gets a lot quieter for some reason, so we probably want to change that around a little bit. Also, you can see we have this little bump here. Um, we can see it was caught there, and we probably want to remove that as well. So we have a starting audio, which is great, but you can see there's a lot of things that we can probably change about it. And I'll show you how to change those things in Audacity itself. So let me go ahead and stop sharing and reshare what we have here. Something else I'll also mention when it does come to importing your audio, uh, sometimes it'll have these two different tracks, and this is kind of like mono versus stereo. Stereo is higher fidelity and usually a little bit, yeah, usually a little bit more higher quality, and is a little bit more dynamic in range. Um, but if you want to sort of change some values around, sometimes you need it to be mono, um, where it's kind of like all on one track, like that audio that we just looked at. The way you sort of put it down from stereo to mono is you'll just select the entire track, you'll go to, and then you'll go to track, mix. And then we'll go to mix stereo down to mono. And that'll be really useful if you want to sort of change some things around. So we'll get to that in just a second, or actually we'll sort of practice that in just a second when I'm going to sort of import some music maybe. Um, but first, let's talk about the basic toolbar. So just so that way we have an understanding of kind of like how to move around on Audacity, there is the pause button, which just pauses the audio. We have the play button, which plays from the playhead, which is kind of that line that we have. We have the stop, which stops the audio and resets the playhead. Stop is different from pause because pause is mostly just if you want to pause and then sort of think about something and hit play. Whenever you want to do a lot of editing to the audio, you want to make sure that your audio is completely stopped. And once it's stopped, then you can usually do a lot of those editing sort of processes. Then there's skip to start. Then there's skip to end, which again sort of puts you at the end of the audio or at the beginning of the audio. Um, so 
those are all those major toolbars. This is recording and this is the loop button. We'll actually go over the loop button separately. Um, and the record button is just recording audio if you want to record it. So let me show you those different things in Audacity itself. Do, 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 do. So again, if we're right here right now, you can see I'm like clicking around. Uh, as I'm clicking, it sets the playhead in different areas. Um, but if I click this, it selects the entire audio. But again, if I click this button, it'll move it to the very beginning. If I click this button, it'll move it to the very end. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see there is those small lines that are showing up. And for example, if I have it at the end and I hit play, nothing will happen because it's at the very end. But if I go ahead and set it to the beginning and hit play, you can see that it begins to move around. I hit pause. We can see where this playhead is. If we want to move that around to maybe here, we hit play. Right, um, let's go ahead and restart that. It'll play from that point. So you can see right here, I have this little like blocker that stops me from editing. That's because we currently have it paused. We just hit stop and that'll do that. Okay, looks like I accidentally looped something, so I just go ahead, went ahead and stopped that. Don't worry about that. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, so other than that, there's also like you can mute this, so you can make sure that it doesn't have any sound, and that'll be helpful if we have multiple tracks. So speaking of which, why don't we go ahead and do a little change here? Why don't we add in another track, like a little bit of music to add to it? So we'll go to File, Import, Audio, and let's put in this. So one of the first things we're noticing is wow, that is a lot louder than what we previously had and a lot longer. Um, so if we just go ahead and go to the very beginning, hit play. You can see that's really, really loud. Um, and you can see right here, it's really loud as well. If we let it play for a little bit longer. Whoops, sorry. I want to do that. Sorry, move that here and we'll play there and then we'll play I think multi literacy center. Again, kind of difficult, and you can't even hear what I'm saying um, or sort of what that initial audio is saying. So why don't we go ahead and just reduce the volume of all of this? So the way we reduce the volume of like something as a whole is down under here, not under sort of effects, is something sort of separate, but we're going to go ahead and remove that. Um, we're just going to go to this, which is just the gain, and this is the gain of the entire track, and we'll just click and drag this down. So let's go gain by like negative 15, see how that sounds. Still pretty loud. Let's go ahead and do another like five. See how that sounds. The writing in multi literacy is much easier to deal with. So if you want to change the audio of an entire file, again, you'll just move around these sort of little dials here. Um, and then one of the other things I mentioned is mixing down stereo down to mono. This is a lot. So why don't we go ahead and do that really fast? So again, we'll go to track. We'll go to sort of uh, mix and we'll do mix stereo, mix stereo down to mono. I'll just make things a little bit easier for us to edit in the future. Um, but one of the things you're noticing here is that this is this is way too long. We need to remove a lot of this. And how do we do that? Um, well, we can do that through splitting. And I'll show you that right now. So firstly, let's go over our little slides so you can kind of get an understanding of that. Um, so we kind of went over this as well, uh, where it's like that idea of playing. Whenever you place down your playhead, it'll play from that little section there. When you pause, it'll pause from where you currently are. Um, you have to excuse me. I went ahead of myself when I was sort of demonstrating Audacity. So before we go over looping, I'll actually start with sort of deleting a section of our audio, and then we'll go to looping. Um, so so what we, if we want to delete a section of our audio or get rid of something, what we'll do is we'll basically click and drag what we want to sort of remove, and then all we'll have to do is hit backspace, and it'll be removed. So it's very simple. Um, so that's a very easy way to delete it. Um, one of the other ways you can sort of delete things is either by splitting or sort of moving our audio around. Um, so I just want to show you that really fast. So moving our audio around is very simple. All you have to do is click and drag on the name or to the, like, the left or right of the name, this little bar right here. And what you can do is you can actually pull it out so that way there's more time before the audio starts or pull it sort of out, like inward so that way it basically removes um, parts of the audio. And that's one way to do it. And then lastly, uh, there's splitting, which basically sets your clip into two different sort of clips. What you'll do is you'll uh, on your playhead, you'll hit edit, audio clips, and split. And what that'll do is it'll create those two separate sort of files. So I wanted to kind of show you those different ways to do it just because um, it's a little bit easier. Whoops, whoa, I'm I'm all over the place, no worries. But I'm gonna first stop sharing my screen um, and go to audio or the sort of audio on Audacity. So the reason why I went through those kind of fast is because I think it's easier if I just show you on here. So um, like I mentioned, there's a few different ways we can delete audio. So one of the main ways you could do it is again, just clicking and dragging and hitting delete. And what that'll do is that'll just straight up delete that audio. So for example, if we play right here, you hear that music. Um, but if we go ahead and just delete a large section here and then hit play, 
It was kind of hard to see here, but there's that little bit of a jump, and that's because we deleted a lot of audio. Same thing if we want to get rid of an entire section. Again, all we have to do is click and drag and make sure we have it set to the select tool, which is right here. And then we just hit delete on our keyboard or backspace, and it'll be gone. So that's one way to delete. Um, so we can just click and drag over the entirety of this audio and hit delete that way, and we can remove it in that way. Um, but we can also do it through splitting. That's one of the other ways to delete audio. So the way splitting works is, again, you'll click on the playhead where you want to be a split. You'll go to edit. You'll go to sort of audio clips. And then you'll hit split. And what that'll do is that'll create these two separate sections. And from this, you can then sort of select an entire one and hit delete. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Or we'll do one more zoom out. So in this case, now the audio will go forward for another like five seconds before ending as opposed to sort of ending after another two minutes. Um, so this also ends pretty abruptly, but we'll go ahead and add some effects to change that later. Um, but I just want to show you again, so there's different ways to delete. So again, there is the basic way, which is just clicking and dragging and hitting delete. Or what you can do is you can go ahead and sort of go to edit. Whoops, where was I? Oh, there it is. Edit, I do clips, split, select it, and hit delete. Other than that, um, you'll notice that we have a little bit of audio in the very beginning. I'm going to mute this really fast so we can just hear this, um, where it's just quiet for a good like five seconds. Again, like before, we can click and drag and hit delete, or we can split it. Uh, but we can also just move it around, and we can move it around to the point where parts of it gets cut off like this. And if we do that, then it'll just start the writing in multi as soon as we start. You can do the same thing to basically delete audio as well if you wanted to start your on campus. That'll help you in the middle like that. Um, but again, just know that there are a lot of different ways that you can actually delete that audio. In this case, I think because we have this little audio, this like music track, it's okay to have that little silence in the beginning because we have that lead up. The right. But if we always want to edit those different things or make it so there's less sort of lead up, we can always click and drag it a little bit over, hit play. The writing in multiple, so we talk a little bit more, or we can even do the opposite and we can sort of drag this out a little bit more this way. So that way there's even more silence before we start talking. So in this case, we're like doubling the amount of sort of time before we start talking. The run that might be a little bit too much. Again, we'll just do it like that. Okay, sounds good. And one of the things we noticed that when we were sort of listening to the audio loud was there was that sort of messing up of that line. So let's see if we can find that and delete that. You can set up appointments on, oh, I forgot. Um, let's go ahead and restart that line. Okay, so it looks like it was all this. So again, we'll just click and drag it. We'll hit delete and now it's gone. And now that should sound good. Help you out with all of your writing and communication needs. You can set up free appointments with a tutor like there you go. Sounds good. No other sort of editing needed, at least for getting rid of that audio. Um, also, we have this little bump here, which is kind of actually, you'll notice here, it's actually almost impossible to hear because of the music. But you can see there is a little bit there. And that's where actually the looping tool comes in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing for a little bit. And I'm going to reshare this so we can just go over. Oops. Sorry about that. So we can just really quickly go over how the looping tool works as well. And once that is done, we, I can show you in Audacity once more. Okay, okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and share my screen. We'll go back to here. So the way the looping tool works, as you saw, um, is I accidentally did it. Um, but what you'll do is you'll select the audio that you want looped. Um, again, this can either be either by clicking and dragging, or if you just put your sort of playhead down and you hover over with your sort of mouse, there'll be a little finger and you can click and drag from that finger and it'll basically like push it over and allow you to select something. From there, you'll just click on this button right here and what that'll do or hit L and that will toggle a loop. And basically what it'll do is it'll create these two little sort of barriers right here. And whenever our playhead passes through this barrier and loop is active, it will then just repeatedly loop through that different area. So now that I showed you a little bit about how the sort of loop tool works, let's talk about it or let's show you in Audacity itself. So you can see right now, even asynchronously play, via voice thread, you just plays normally. But if we wanted to sort of really sort of see, like, if we're if this was maybe between like half a second, and we really wanted to make sure that we're only doing the right thing, we'll select what we want sort of looped. So we'll just do this part. We'll hit this right here, and then what it'll do is it'll begin looping. Oh, it looks like actually we have a loop. Help you out with all of your. He is a free organization and service here on campus. Well, in this case, help you out with all of your. He is a free organization. It'll loop in the section right there. So in this case, because we had sort of that loop um, in the very beginning here, when I was trying to create a new loop, it wasn't letting me because there's another one here. So what you can do here is you'll notice I just right click and there's something that says clear loop. And I'll clear that loop. So now if we want to set the loop here, I'll do that. Weird. Sorry about that. Don't know why this guy likes having that loop there. Let's go ahead and go back to the very beginning. 
We'll click and drag. Then we'll hit loop. There we go. And then we have the loop there. I believe it was because the playhead was over here and we didn't have it on stop that it's trying to create a loop on the playhead. So now if we hit play in person via Zoom, it'll go or through normally via it voice won't loop, thread. But once it enters that barrier, it'll go ahead and keep that going. So now you can we can hear that sort of little bit there. So that's how the looping tool works. We'll go ahead and remove that loop. Um, and then let's actually just go ahead and delete that little, little bump there. So again, just select it, hit delete. And there we go. Okie dokie. Normally, this would be a time that I'd stop and ask for questions, but since this is asynchronous, I will assume y'all are doing great. Um, but again, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to sort of uh, book an appointment with myself or anyone else at the WMC. So now they're talking about sort of moving our audio around, sort of deleting some things. We have some music in there. Um, let's talk about sort of doing a little bit more of editing. Specifically, we have a section that's a little bit quieter than the rest. So why don't we go ahead and make that a little bit louder? So there's two different ways. Um, one is a little bit more visual, um, but not as accurate. And one is a little bit more accurate, but a little bit more numerical wise. I'd always recommend doing the more numerical wise because there's a few sort of tips and tricks to make that easier. But first, let's go over that visual way of doing it. So this is the envelope tool. What this does is it basically creates two points that you can then click and drag and it'll dynamically increase the volume based on those points. Um, so if you want to edit the entire of your audio with the envelope tool, just creating two points is fine. But if you want to create it within a specific sort of section, you'll have to have these little anchor points. So you can see there's two sets that you need to make basically the start uh, which is one's an anchor, one's you're going to move, and at the very end, one's an anchor, one, you're, one is you're going to move. So that way you have it kind of like buffered in of the section that you want to sort of edit. Then from there, you'll click and drag them up or down to make it louder or softer. And you can see here, it's a little bit harder to notice, but it does increase the waveforms. Um, and that's what that does. And you can also sort of go sort of move it down so it's quieter. And you can even make a little bit of a fade if you have one set at the very top and one set that's sort of um, smaller or near the bottom. Um, when it comes to getting rid of an envelope, all you have to do is click and drag those little circles and just move them all the way to the top and it'll just get rid of those different files. Or those, sorry, those little sort of envelope tools. So let me show you how that works in Audacity since that is a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna get, I'm going to sort of zoom in here a little bit. So we have this section here that is noticeably quite zoom or even asynchronously via voice thread. So we can hear it sounds fine there. We're here to help you at any stage. Of and it looks like the mic got pulled closer away or pulled further away from the face. So in that case, we want to make some changes here. So again, I'll select the envelope tool, which is right up here. And from there, we'll get a little bit of difference here. And if we just click a sort of, if we just click once, you can see depending on where it is, it will just edit the entire audio. So if we just place it all the way up here or sort of in the middle, it'll make things quieter. If we try and do it, on that line, it will make that much of a difference. And so again, the reason why we have the two sets of each kind of like this is because if we don't and we try and edit something, you can see now it is in relation to the other sort of point. So because of that, it's editing the entire audio. Um, so in that case, we want to have these little sort of anchor points. And with those anchor points that are now in place, if we edit it, it won't do edit anything else other than anything within that section here. So you can see if I do it this way, where I have one that's near the top here, it's actually going to become softer over time. We're here to help you at any stage of your assignment, whether you're just getting started, need help with citations, or you just want to say, and it's very sort of very sort of imperceptible or very sort of small, but that is there. Um, so that's why uh, you can make some like fades with it. And again, if we pull this down even more, we can make that fade even more sort of present. Um, but if we want to make everything louder, again, we'll just click and drag them to be just equal. And now we have this section to be a little bit sort of louder than everything else that we have. So that's how the envelope tool works. And again, if you want to get rid of it, you'll just click and drag and you'll move them up. And when you do so, they'll be deleted. So once again, to use the envelope tool, click on envelope. We'll create uh, two, two sets of points on both sides that you want to edit. One's an anchor point, one's the one you're going to move. Then from there, you're just going to click and drag them accordingly to sort of be how much or how loud you want them to be. If you wanted to sort of dip down into the center, you can always do it like this. Um, or if you just want to have it where it's just louder, you can go again, just raise them up again. And you want to get rid of them, you just click and drag them and drag them off the screen. Okie dokie. So that is the odd, that is the sort of envelope tool. So let's talk about the other tool to sort of make your sound a little bit louder. Um, that's a little bit more accurate, which is going to be the amplify tool. So the way Amplify tool works is it's under effects, and there are a lot of effects, and we're only going to go over a few of them today, but you can see there is a ton. Um, but the way you'll work the way it works is you'll basically select the audio that you want to sort of add that effect to. You'll go to volume and compression, and then you'll click amplify. So again, uh, select it, 
effect, volume compression, and then amplify. From there, you'll see this sort of little window here. And from here, you can edit how much you want the audio to be amplified by. You hit apply. And then from there, it'll basically make it a lot louder. So there's actually a little bit of um, uh, something that we can do to make sure that how loud it is is very accurate. But first, I'll just show you the basics on how it works. So in this case, I want this to be louder. So I'll just click and drag it. I'll go to effect. I'll go to volume and compression. And I'll go to amplify. And you can see here, we have this sort of amplification. So it says by 10 decibels. Um, so if we do it here, we can sort of see all these different things. You can see, actually, it doesn't allow us to apply because it's too loud. It actually caps out. Um, but if we go by maybe like 10 and we hit apply, you can see they get much louder. Um, so again, you go to effect, volume and compression, amplify. Um, and again, however much you do, it'll go ahead and apply that amplification. One of the things you'll actually notice is as I'm sort of going through this, there is a new sort of value at the bottom, which is new peak amplitude. Um, and that's actually very important because if we want to make sure that this matches exactly with this, we can just set it so that with the new peak amplitude, the peak amplitude of what we have here is the same here. So if we just listen to our audio and pay attention to up here, free appointments with a tutor like myself for 30 minutes or an hour in person via Zoom. You can actually see Audacity keeps track of the loudest part or the loudest section of your audio, what the loudest section of your audio was. So in this case, we have about negative six. So if we click and drag it here, we get to effects, volume compression, amplify, and we just set the new peak amplitude to negative six. It'll automatically sort of choose an amplification that will match what we have here. So now if we listen to this, it should sound honestly via voice thread, the same volume. We're here to help you at any stage of your assignment, whether you and just as so you have a little bit of that before and after. Via voice thread. We're here to help you at any via voice thread. We're here to help you at any stage. So you can see much better. And it sort of matches the volume sort of a lot easier. So again, uh, the way we do that is we'll just listen on our sort of normal audio. Yes. You can set attention up to up here to see when the max sort of volume is, and it's usually the highest peak. So if we put Peter, it here again, like my... uh, up to negative six, then you'll select the audio on amplified, go to effect volume and compression, amplify, change that new peak amplitude to the sort of one that it is. So negative six, in this case, the amplification is zero because it's already amplified to have that peak. You'll hit apply, and that's how you sort of increase that volume there. Okie dokie. So now that we've gone over amplification, those different ways to make sort of audios louder. Um, let's talk about auto ducking. So auto ducking is really cool in the fact that if you have a backtrack or some kind of music background, um, auto ducking is your best friend. What it essentially does is it tells the audio that is like on top to essentially duck down whenever another audio is playing. So the result of this is basically while you're speaking, music becomes much softer and kind of fades to the background. So the way you do this is you want to make sure that your voice is on the bottom track or the music is on top. Then from there, you'll select all of the sort of music that you want auto duct or whatever um, audio you want auto duct. Then you'll go to effect, volume and compression, and auto duck. And then from there, it'll automatically auto duct. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So again, right now we have sort of our music that's playing like this. We have it sort of come through. There's a little bit of that sort of like music break. They're writing and blocking, um, which is great. Let's go ahead and actually move that a little bit here. But firstly, we want to have our voice on the bottom and the music on top. The way we can do that is we just click this little carrot here. Um, you can see we have a few sort of options here, but the main thing we care about is we can do move track up. So now that we have the sort of audio of the music on top and our voice on the bottom, we'll select all of our music. We'll go to effect, volume and compression, and then we'll hit auto duct. And you can see here, it gives us all these settings. So we can actually go into a lot of specifics when it comes to how much we want to auto duct. Um, you can see again, duck amount, outer fade length, inner fade length, so on and so forth. But if we just hit apply, we can now see the magic sort of happen here. So you can see as we start talking, it gets much lower. And when we have a break in talking, it, get much, it gets much louder and so on and so forth. So if we just hit play from the very beginning, The Writing and Multi-Literacy Center, or WMC, is a free organization and service. There you go. And if we play it right here, just to get an idea, or even asynchronously via voice thread. We're here to help you at any stage of your assignment. So you can change a lot of those aspects to how much time there is in between the, the like, the music picking up again, um, or how small the pause has to be when it starts auto ducking. Um, but again, that's what the auto ducking does. It's a very sort of nice sort of tool. So you don't have to do individual sort of amplifications or sort of like making things softer. Um, you can just do it that way.
So why don't we go ahead and go back to our sort of slide deck here. Um, let's talk about fading. So as you saw with the envelope tool, the envelope tool can create a fade, but there is a more sort of precise way to do it. Um, the way we can do it is we just select the audio that we want to have fading in or out. And then we'll go to effect, fading, and then we'll either click fade in or fade out. And then what it'll automatically do is from where the we first set the sort of um, our cursor, it'll set that to 100. And at the very end, it'll set that to zero. Um, and it'll sort of create that slow sort of fade into that. So why don't we go ahead and take a look to see how that works in Audacity. So you can see here right now, we have a very abrupt ending or just straight up ends. So if we want to have a fade that is a little bit more gradual, we'll go click and drag, we'll select it all. We'll go to effect, volume and compression. Then we'll go to, oh, sorry. No, we'll go to fading and then we'll go fade out. And you can see now that fades out. So we have that nice little fade. And if you want that fade to last even longer or sort of be even more gradual, we can select and we can click and drag more of that audio. We'll go to effect, sort of uh, fading, do fade out. And you can see now, It'll fade out over a much sort of longer period of time and slowly fade into nothing. So again, um, that's how we do that. We just click and drag the thing we want faded. We'll go to effect fading, and then we'll either fade in and fade out. So in this case, if we can have, if we want to have it in the I middle, to see you soon, we can have it in the middle like that. Okie dokie. So that is how we sort of fade in, fade out. Um, so now that we have that done, let's talk about noise reduction. So whenever you're going to be sort of doing audio or audio recording, there's a chance that there might be a fan in the background or some kind of like AC going or some kind of sort of background noise that is there. Um, in the practice audio that we have, there isn't a lot of background noise, but we are still going to go through the process of this. Um, and if you have a good mic or a good sort of recording space, you actually don't need to really do this sort of section if there isn't really any background noise. But just know that the that Audacity has these tools to get rid of these. Um, also, quick little plug here, the WMC does have a sort of multimedia room or sort of like the multimedia studio um, that does have a soundproofed room and a nice microphone in there with Audacity already set up. Um, so if you are doing some kind of recording, you can always book an appointment with the WMC to just use that space. Um, and when you're using that space, you don't have to worry about sort of removing sort of background noise or any of those sort of additional details just because we already have that space soundproofed for you. Um, but the way we're going to go ahead and remove noise reduction or background noise is the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to select just background noise. And this is why a lot of sort of studios or just in general, why it's always a good idea to take one to two minutes to just hit record um, just so you can capture background noise, um, primarily for this purpose. So again, you'll select just background noise. Then you go to effect, noise removal and repair. And then from there, it'll actually give you the step one and two. And then you'll just click get noise profile. From there, it'll basically tell Audacity, hey, this is background noise. I want you to remove this background noise. But first, you're just getting it to recognize what the background noise is. Then once you've done that, you'll select the entire audio that you want to get the, get rid of the background noise from. Then you'll go to Effect, Noise Remove and Repair, Noise Reduction once more. And then from there, you're just going to go ahead and hit OK. And it'll go ahead and remove that background noise. So again, let me stop sharing here. And let me go to Audacity, show you how that works. So again, you'll just select just background noise. So we're just here. So in this case, we just have background noise here. So we'll just like that. We'll go to effects. We'll go to noise removal and repair. We'll go to noise reduction. And from again, it'll give you the steps here, but we're saying, hey, this is background noise. So now that we've done that, it now recognizes that, hey, this is background noise. Then you'll select the entirety of the audio. You want to get rid of it. You'll go to effect. You go to noise removal and repair. You go to noise reduction. And then from there, you can again change all these different details of like sensitivity, noise reduction. You'll hit OK. And I'll go ahead and remove that background noise. So again, select just background noise, go to effects, noise removal and repair, noise reduction, click get noise profile, then select the entire audio, go to effect, go to noise removal and repair, go to noise reduction, hit OK. And that's how you remove background noise. OK, almost done here. So now that we've sort of talked about sort of noise reduction, uh, let's talk about the compressor. So the compressor is a sort of not a lot of people use this uh, just because it's not super. Um, most of the time, we don't really need it. But I just want to mention it very briefly because it's very easy to use. And it's a good sort of idea to it's a good sort of indicator of the fact that a lot of sort of audacity effects are pretty easy to use. You just select the audio you want to add the effect to and then go to effect and then change those different things. Um, what the compressor does is it basically changes and reduces the audio's dynamic range 
it basically changes the difference in level between the loudest and quiet parts of the audio. So everything's a little bit more consistent. So if you have something where you're a little bit louder or like um, you have a sudden sort of high note or something like that, um, or voice crack, um, what it'll do is it'll basically take the distance of, it'll take the entire audio. It'll be like, oh, this is the highest point. This is the lowest point. And it'll try and kind of equalize it a little bit. So that way it's not that high of a jump. So the way we'll do is you usually want to do this for the entire audio. You'll basically select the entire audio. Whoops. Um, you'll go to volume and compression, and then you'll hit compressor. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like in Audacity. So again, share screen, WMC test audio, well, bam. So we'll select all of what we have here. We'll go to effect. We'll go to volume and compression. We'll go to compressor. And again, you can see that it has these details here. It tells you what the threshold is. Okay, the threshold is 12 de uh, like decibels. The floor, the minimum is negative 40. You go ahead and hit apply. And you can see it'll change some things here. So in this case, it sounds like there was sort of a bigger jump. So its sort of solution to that was to make things a little bit louder overall so things aren't as big and sort of the smaller sections um, have a bigger jump than the bigger sections. So again, that's what that tool does. Again, the way we do is just select the audio, go to effects volume and compression, go to compressor, hit apply, and it'll go ahead and make those changes. Okie dokie. So with that in mind, um, that pretty much does it for the entirety of the workout that we are the sort of, uh, sorry, that the workshop that we have today. Uh, I'm just going to go over very briefly what the practice exercise would be and how something and how I'd really recommend for you to actually sort of go ahead and sort of edit this practice sort of, uh, or go through and edit this sort of audio. Um, if you go to this link right here, which is tinyurl.com slash audacity dash practice, I'll actually bring you to a Google Drive folder where you can go ahead and download both of these sort of audio files. It's the same ones that I've been working on today. And from here, I really recommend for you to go through and either add, and add in the mu audio and music, cut unwanted parts of the audio and music, amplify or uh, envelop parts of the audio that are quieter, remove the background noise, auto duck the music, fade the music, and then finally exporting the product. So that is the final thing that I'll show you how to do today is export on Audacity. So once you're happy with everything that you have today and you have finished that sort of sort of practice, again, you'll go to file, you go to export audio, and from there, what it'll do is you can just export the audio. You'll have a lot of different sort of things here where you can change different things um, if you want to, um, but pretty much everything here is fine. You hit export. You can see in this case, it's saying, hey, this already exists, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit yes. And from there, it'll go ahead and export that file, and you'll have that final audio file. So uh, again, this has been our sort of the WMC async asynchronous workshop on how to use Audacity, at least an introduction into Audacity. If you have any questions, again, you're more than welcome to book an appointment at the WMC. Um, but without that, or with with that in mind, uh, best of luck on your practice, and I hope to see you guys soon.